Hello and welcome. Today I have with me what I think is the world's cheapest B flat F trombone. A trombone with a trigger for less than or approximately equal to 200 US dollars. And this is it. This is it here. This instrument was sent to me by the Tom Top website in the hope that I would review it. Um, and it is a fairly standard tr Chinese made trombone uh, and I'm going to split this review into sort of two sections. I'm going to first look at the valve section which is this bit here without the slide attached and then I'm going to look at the slide and mouthpiece part of the instrument. So starting with the valve section I was very very surprised when I had a bit of a closer look to this. Sure when I got it out of its case the valve was a bit um, a bit scratchy but I spent about a quarter of an hour taking the valve apart, cleaning up the surface finish, lubricating it, put it back together and now it works fine. It's it's not a silent valve but uh, it's it articulates quickly, there's no um, slop in the mechanism, it's not wobbly or uh, bendy as some of the other really cheap Chinese trigger trombones so often are, uh, and really this part of the instrument exceeds my expectations quite remarkably. I will mention two things about this uh, valve section, firstly the diameter across the flare of the bell is nine and a half inches, this isn't a tenor trombone bell flare which would typically be eight and a half inches diameter or less, it is a bass trombone size bell flare. And the second thing I'll mention is that because this is a bass trombone size bell flare and it only has a single trigger, it would have been really nice if the trigger tuning slide was long enough to extend this from being in the key of F to the key of E. Uh, and what that extra length would do would ensure that you could actually play a fully chromatic range. Low concert B natural with, a, uh, with the short tuning slide on here extended all the way is not going to be in tune. So barring those two things that I mentioned, I have no real other complaints with this. It is surprisingly solidly made and well put together for an instrument of this price point. However, the other side of the arrangement with the slide and mouthpiece sections is a little bit more disappointing. The slide movement is quite heavy, quite scratchy, exactly what you would expect from this price point. It's not unusable, it's about the same as an average second hand uh, plastic trombone slide, um, so it's not unusable. But there are a couple of things here that are a bit weird. Number one, the shank, this, this part where the, uh, bell, where the slide section fits onto the bell section has this rather long uh, tube here and the difference between the surface area at this point and the difference between the surface area at this point is about 20%. This tapers incredibly dramatically, or relatively dramatically, and the result of that is that you've got a 20% less area for your ear to go through at this end than what you do at this end. That adds restriction, it impedes the airflow, um, and I don't understand why it needs to be quite that dramatic, it's, it's quite bizarre. The other thing I'll mention is that the mouthpiece receiver here is not a standard size. If you get a small bore trombone mouthpiece, it's too big, uh, sorry the, the mouthpiece is too small, it just sort of flobbers around in the hole, and if you get a large bore trombone mouthpiece, you can only just squeeze the tip in, and if you do try to squeeze the tip in, then it's, the mouthpiece sticks out too far, it's going to impede tuning and intonation and all the rest of it. So you pretty much have to use the mouthpiece that comes with this instrument. And this mouthpiece is also quite weird, the length of the shank here is 
a centimeter or more than what I'm used to seeing on a trombone mouthpiece and the throat the little part where the hole in the mouthpiece is is a lot smaller than what we are what I am accustomed to see on a trombone mouthpiece so you've got a slide section that's got a considerable restriction uh, in the mouthpiece hole here you've got a slide section that on the other end has a considerable restriction here and you've got a slide where you can't change the mouthpiece I've only got one mouthpiece in my collection that fits this trombone and that is from an E flat tuba small bore E flat tuba from about the 1940s so trying to find something that's going to work in this slide is going to be pretty difficult however that all being said it's what you expect from this price point. You're not expecting a Bach Stradivarius and the fact that you can get a trombone with a good valve section at around 200 US dollars is quite frankly mind-blowing. And so if I had to have this trombone myself, what I would do is keep the valve section, the bell section. I've got no issues really with the way that this is put together. In fact, I think you're getting a bargain for the money just for the valve section. Um, and I would mate it with a different slide. Uh, a slide that doesn't have the issues about the non-standard mouthpiece receiver and the weird thing up this side um, and I would use this combination that I have here that's what I'd do if I had to have this trombone uh, if I had to play this trombone myself so uh, anyway I hope this review has been of some use to those people who have asked me to review this trombone and those people who have been considering buying this themselves thank you very much for watching